Hey everyone, it's Jen with Spirited Saturdays. And this week we're talking about eating disorders and self-harm. This is a topic that's very close to me um, as I have self-harmed. I have a history with this and it's something that I rarely talk about actually, especially on YouTube. So, um, but in my life I don't really address it much. Um, so I'm actually grateful for this opportunity to get to talk about it and to connect with others who are struggling with it or who have struggled. Maybe be a source of support in that way. I would like to do that. A lot of my advocacy work centers around eating disorders. So this, this is definitely um, important to address as well. So my own personal history with self-harm started when I was 14. I was depressed. This was, I had my first major episode of depression and I began self-harming and I, um, you know, I've been looking for a way to get out this anger that I had and I, it was more than just a teenage anger. It was uh, something a lot worse and a lot heavier. And once I sort of found self-harm and I really did look at it like that, it almost like finding religion. It was almost like, thank goodness I found this thing that will allow me to breathe, like exhale. Um, it just, everything like first it was a release and then it was it ruined me it really did it, it made everything that I was already feeling a million times worse um, it made me so much more depressed and it was almost like I would self-harm then I would feel depressed and then I would self-harm because I was depressed so it would just be this cycle um, which is very similar to certain cycles in eating disorders so I um, so from 14 to 20, I, I struggled. Um, and when I was 20, I went into, tr I got treatment for what they diagnosed as borderline personality disorder. I'm not really sure. And they're actually, like my therapist isn't even sure that I have that, but it was what, what they were diagnosing everyone with at the time who cut themselves. I mean, basically the only criteria you needed was to self-harm and you were diagnosed with that. But the program that I went to was for borderline personality disorder, and it was for, and it was it used dialectical behavioral therapy. So I learned a lot there for my life in general, um, and what I did, what I learned there, helped me stop self harming. Um, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough to like scratch that itch that was the root of the pain that I was experiencing that made me feel like I needed a substance, a something, a coping tool, you know, so I just switched tools basically after that um, and really developed an eating disorder that I had um, dabbled, I guess you could say, in for many years. Um, now that the self-harm was gone, I was sort of, my eating disorder was like free to reign on <laughs> my entire life. So that's, that was the progression, self-harming from 14 to 20. Um, while experiencing some minor kind of borderline eating disorder behaviors that never really took hold completely, um, but then f fully developing that once the self-harm was gone, which is a huge danger um, in any addiction. I mean, self-harm is, I considered it an addiction, and it is... Um, it's something we have to be careful of this like this symptom substitution replacing addictions we have to understand and be careful that when we try and heal from an addiction we're healing more than just from the addiction we're healing from the root of of the problem and we, we're healing from the desire to have an addiction or the need to have an addiction and so if we still have that need then obviously there's more healing that we need to do so i would say be be on the lookout for that. How much are you healing? Um, at what level are you really healing from? Um, so um, I want to talk about some of the similarities um, and the dangers of denial um, in self-harm and eating disorders. First of all, you can have both an eating disorder and you can self-harm at the same time, or it can go like one before the other. It can be in any sort of way, um, and um, at any at any time along in that timeline, or whether it's together or apart, there's um, there can there is potential for a lot of denial. I 
Um, I had a therapist tell my parents once when I was 14 that I was going to be fine because I wasn't cutting on the dangerous side of my arm. So there's, you know, thankfully we've hopefully come a long way. That was 1996. So I hope that, you know, since then there have been a l there's been a little more talk about it um, in the community and among therapists. But um, I would still... I would still think that th there's a lot of denial just because, you know, there's, there remains so much denial in eating disorders, and I would imagine um, there's probably a lot of denial in self-harm um, as well. So I would just be on the lookout for that, you know, or you didn't, like, just ask yourself and try to be honest with yourself and others about how, um, you know, I think if you're cutting at all, if you're self-harming, whatever that means for you, if you're doing it at all, there's a problem. So it's really, you know, justifying it is not ever helpful. That gets you, um, it just gets you deeper in because there's really no justification for doing it at all, ever, even if you're doing, and, and for, like, reasons, um, for any reason, like, I, like, even if you think you're doing it as like artwork, like that's still self-harm because you could probably do artwork and not make yourself hurt. So why do you need to feel hurt, feel pain um, in order to express yourself? It's really the same. It's just an extension um, of just like simply cutting yourself, you know, um, doing the artwork. It's like it's almost like it's they're both they're both they're both um expressions they're both like releases but one takes the form of of maybe i don't know of art that you can express in a different way on paper or whatever that would mean for you or even like body art you know um but it doesn't have to involve pain so just be on the lookout for you know for any kind of like ritualistic justification somebody could give it you know that too um, just like e eating disorders, I mean, people can use religion to cover up an eating disorder. Um, in some cases, I'm not saying that all religion is eating disorder. I'm just saying, like, in some cases, it could be used. So, um, yeah, so there's denial, there's justification, and I would say be on the lookout for both. Um, oh, yeah, um, um, what else? So, I think... For me, just to go back to a little bit about my story, those six years that I was self-harming were so sad. They were so heavy. They were so lonely and so isolating. And um, it kind of went in this cycle of st like starting a school semester or a term and going and maybe going into like a month and then getting depressed and starting to self-harm it was just this pattern I just got into this pattern of like starting school getting depressed and self-harming and obviously it went back way way deeper way f earlier than that but that's how it manifested at least on a s on maybe superficial kind of a level it was on a surfacey level that's how it worked um so school was a very isolating place for me, even though I was surrounded by people, because I was not doing well in class. I was just in this very, very dark place and just letting myself sink deeper and deeper and really on the verge of desperation all the time. Um, I don't think I understood that I had lots of resources, that I had lots of people to reach out to that I just wasn't utilizing. I also didn't feel worth it. Part of the eating disorder, the reason that developed was because I would think to myself often when I was self-harming, as I got further into it later on, I would think it's not enough to hurt myself on the surface. And that was about my worth. That was how, that was just spoke to how little I felt I was worth. Um, it wasn't enough to hurt myself on the surface. I needed to hurt myself on the inside. And I'm pretty sure that had to do with developing the eating disorder later. And had I understood that I was allowed to feel more worthy, I mean, I'm almost like about to get choked up just thinking about how sad I, I was then and how lonely I was. Um, and I'm just thinking that now, like, you know, if there are people out there who are going through this right now, you know, you actually really can reach out to people. There are people who are understanding and who can help you and 
it's good that we have YouTube and things like that so that you can easily find people, but there are also people in your community and there are resources that are available to you. Um, you don't have to go through this alone and you're not deserving of any of the pain that you put on yourself. So, um, yeah, so that's a question of worth. You're worth more than you think you are. You're stronger than you think you are. Um, so another thing I want to address is the idea of self-harm, eating disorders, and suicide, suicidality. Um, I think self-harm and eating disorders are mainly a form of coping and trying to stay afloat. But there's a thin line between doing a self-destructive behavior to self-sabotage and going further and putting yourself in huge danger um, and, and at risk for dying, at risk of dying. I think that that can be, it could be, it could happen accidentally um, if you cut too deep and you don't realize it because you're just so gone, you're just so, la you're just so void of devoid of inhibition and um, feel that you're so just that worthless that it doesn't matter or it can really be like you really either don't care or almost want it or you do want it and it can happen in steps so it's really not a black or white thing of like you're self-harming that means you're not suicidal because it can there's a gray area and it can the two can meet and it can be a very dangerous line where they meet. So um, I would say, just like with eating disorders, so I would say if that, if you're even thinking along those lines, you need to get help and you need to talk to somebody right now if you're even having inklings of suicidal thoughts. Um, and, um, and, and the, um, I forget. So yeah, the other thing you want to look at is what motivates you to self-harm as opposed to what motivates you to have an eating disorder thought or behavior. Um, that might be an interesting place to, that might take you to some place interesting in your recovery. Um, write about it, ask your therapist, really think about that. For me, self-harming came from a little bit more of a place of anger, but it really depended. So, um, but I know there are two distinct, different, distinctly different states that I'm in when I want to do one or the other. So it's good to pay attention to that and understand like the core motivation for each thing um, and think about you know what purpose is the serving and then try to formulate other ways of serving that same purpose in that moment and, and over time but really in that moment in that crisis kind of a moment it could be important to catch it and thwart it like and un and redirect the um, how you're going to attain that same purpose that you might feel like you've, you would have gotten from the self-destructive behavior. Um, also ask yourself along those lines, like how does this self-destructive behavior, how, what's, not just what purpose is it serving, what purpose is it serving to help me figure out another way to get to that purpose, but really think about how is this making me weaker? How is this doing the very thing that the op that's opposite from what I wanted it to do? Um, and um, look at that and maybe, you know, that'll be a good way to kind of keep it in check or keep yourself in check and understanding that it's not what it's, it's cracked up to be. It's an addiction and it's easy to justify and deny and feel like you can continue to need an addiction, your addiction, but it's not you. It's not you at your core. Um, so no matter what, it's important to surround yourself with people that can make you feel less alone with this and can make you feel like there's hope for recovery. Um, if those people aren't in your immediate environment, seek them out, therapists, support groups, you know, compassionate people who won't blame you or judge you. Um, and, um, and just remember that it can be a slow process to, reco to recover from self-harm, but it's, it, it, it's worth it to get to that place and it's worth it to go through that process because you're going to come out of it understanding and feeling closed up. You're going to feel sewn up again. You're not going to feel like there's this itch that you need to scratch. So it's worth, it's worth it. It really is very much worth enduring the process, going through it and coming out a more healed person and just somebody who values themselves more and you're deserving of that. Thanks.